Could someone you know actually be a sex addict? Here to tell us about the warning signs is Dr. Doug Weiss and Dr. Debbie Herbenick. Also in the audience, Ray and Ginger Klein. Ray is a recovering sex addict. And, and, and Dr. Weiss, you talked a little bit earlier about the fact that the vast majority of people who are sex addicts actually were abused as children. Tell me again how this childhood abuse manifests itself into this sure. adult behavior. Well, when you're sexually abused, like I was and Ray was, you're used as a sex object. And you begin to uh, connect sex in an object relationship instead of a personal relationship. And so then finding pornography and object relationship sex is really easy. Then you start attaching and gluing to that neurochemically. And it takes you on this whole ride uh, that you can move into induction. But most of them are medicating the psychological pain. And that's, that's legit. Let's talk about another warning sign, which is the inability to be emotionally intimate. What does that mean exactly? Well, when you're a sex addict, uh, for, as a guy, you're about 14 years old emotionally because most of them lock in emotionally and morally at the age in which their addiction occurs. And that's true whether you're cocaine, uh, drugs, or sex. And so you stay emotionally immature. So if you're married to a guy who's like about 14 years emotionally, there's probably something going on there. And so it robs you of that development. And what do you think about that, Dr. Herbenick? I think we're probably going to keep disagreeing respectfully. <laughs> um, but there actually, you know, there is research on this. And it really, um, sort of, you know, this idea of hypersexuality or compulsive sexual behavior. And generally, you know, again, these are diverse people. And not everyone has, you know, difficulties with intimacy. Certainly many of them are having conflict within their relationships. And some do absolutely have some challenges with intimacy, especially when they start hiding things or are dishonest. But again, recognize always that this is such a diverse group. Next, you talk about mood swings that are tied to sex. Well, here's what happens in any addiction, alcohol, drugs, or whatever. There is withdrawal. So you use the addiction to medicate some kind of pain. When you can't get your medicine, you start getting antsy, you start having withdrawals, you start getting irritable and frustrated that you can't get to your fix. Another is excessive computer use. And I think, Dr. Herbenick, you would agree that that someone who is, I guess, porn addiction and sex addiction seem to go hand in hand. Yeah, it's just a very is that accurate? Well, again, you know, we're not, I'm not going to use those terms, but, but absolutely that, you know, some subsets, some people who really struggle with their sexual behavior do um, experience it in terms of porn. Not everyone does. For mm -hmm. some, it's other things, but for some, porn use is at the center of it. And, and have you the majority, found that? The majority since, since the internet, I mean, I'm old enough that we used to have to go to bookstores, okay? Uh, since the internet, Pornography is a huge part of sexual addiction. So if you see a huge internet file on your husband's computer, start asking questions for sure. But you can be addicted to porn, but not necessarily a sex addict? If a guy's looking at porn, the only thing he uses it for is a sexual release. It's not entertainment for him, okay? Uh, but then that can take you to other behaviors like strip clubs, prostitutes, multiple affairs, all kinds of crazy behaviors. So it's kind of like the pot world going into the drug world. I think it's also important to remember though that just because somebody has a file on their computer with porn doesn't mean it's a problem, right? For I said some huge people, file. I said even huge if it's file. huge, for some people, you know, watching... We're going to disagree because you're a little more liberal in that whole thing. We, yeah, because we probably will disagree on that, that, but for some people it is enjoyable and I just think we have to acknowledge that some people do feel in control of their behavior uh -huh. and may enjoy diverse ways of expression, whether that's porn or sex toy use. So if you think or you're worried that someone is, is addicted to pornography, addicted to sex, or both, mm -hmm. um, what, what should you do to help that person, even if you don't believe there's an actual addiction going on? Uh, what would you recommend, Dr. Weiss? I recommend that they, they do some research on sexual addiction. Clinically, they might look up sexual compulsivity, but sexual addiction on the internet is going to help them with a lot of information. Find someone who, who can help them, even if they're a wife. Uh, we help a lot of the wives before we get the husbands in. Uh, we do three-day and five-day intensives. There's clinicians all across the country that can help them. And there's 12-step support groups for the wives and for the addicts and for the female addicts. So there's lots of help and there's lots of information now that there used to not be. So take the first step, get informed, and then take the second step, get help. And what about you, Dr. Herbenick? What would you recommend for people who re yeah. really have some legitimate concerns? Yeah, and there are. There are people, there are individuals and couples who have some concerns, they need help. I think going to a qualified professional, I think, you know, personally, the Society for Sex Therapy and Research has a great number of professionals who, 
you can find on your website somebody near you. It's but not the only place, but it's one. They want to believe in addiction. And it's also a place that you know you can find help, not just as an individual, although there are some individuals who can just go for help on their own, but really if you're in a relationship to involve your partner. Very often, sometimes people will do this alone or their partner will send them and say, it's your problem, go fix it. But they'll probably have a better outcome if they can join therapy together. We agree. A couple, a couple working together <laughs> will do better than a man going or a woman going by themselves. And clearly, I mean, I think as illustrated here, there are two pretty distinct schools of thought when it comes to sexual addiction. I mean, I think that you're open to the idea that there are there is compulsive sexual behavior, Absolutely. for sure. And I think it shows where we're at in the science of it. It's still an it early stage. And there's a lot, I think there are far more questions about this than there are answers. And, and Ray and Ginger, we have you here. I mean, what would you recommend? Here you are, obviously were able to put your marriage back together. If there's uh, someone out there who's worried about her spouse or he's worried about his spouse, what would you say to them? The women should probably ask their men, the, the men directly if they're, if they're struggling with this or if they're looking at pornography. Are they masturbating and these kinds of things without their knowledge about it? Are they keeping any kind of secrets from one another? Are they having multiple affairs? Absolutely. And, and maybe if they're sensing this moodiness that was discussed about, check in and find out what, that, what is that about. And what about you, Ginger? What would you say if there's a wife out there who thinks that she might be married to somebody like Ray? I think being aware of the problem, that it does exist, um, and just, I guess, paying attention to warning signs like you're describing and asking the hard questions. All right, well, Ray and Ginger, thank you. As I said, it's probably pretty uncomfortable and difficult to talk about this in a public forum, so thank you both very much for doing that. And Debbie Herbenick, Dr. Herbenick, and Dr. Weiss, thank you both as well.